In this video, let's take a closer look at template-driven forms in Angular. As the name indicates, in template-driven forms, much of the code and logic resides in the HTML template. Let's take a look at some of the key points related to template-driven forms, which I will refer to as TDF. The TDF approach is easy to use and is similar to Angular 1 forms. In this approach, we heavily rely on two-way data binding. We don't have to keep track of the input field values and react to change in the input field values. Angular takes care of that with the ng model directive. As a result though, you are going to have bulky HTML code and minimal component code. In TDF approach, Angular also provides the ng form directive which along with the ng model directive automatically tracks the form and form elements state and validity. A drawback of the TDF approach is when it comes to unit testing. The form validation logic cannot be unit tested. The only way to test the logic is to run an end-to-end -end test with a browser. A second drawback is when it comes to handling complex forms. As we add more and more validations to a field, or when we start adding complex cross-field validations, the readability of the form decreases to a great extent. So the question is, when should you go with the TDF approach? If you have to create a simple form for which unit testing can be handled with the browser, go with the TDF approach. For more complex forms with complex validations and where unit testing is absolutely necessary, go with reactive forms. All right, now that we have a brief insight into the TDF approach, let's take a look at how we will be proceeding with this course. We are going to start off by generating a new CLI project. We will then add the HTML that represents the form we will be working with. After that, we will have a look at data binding. That is followed by tracking form state and validity, providing visual feedback, and displaying error messages. Finally, we will wind up the TDF approach by creating an express server and posting data from our Angular application to the express server. So in the next video, let's begin with step one, that is generating a new Angular project using the CLI. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.